Welcome to BTI, that's Bible Training Institute. We open the scriptures every week, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Study with us and learn how to know God as a close, intimate, and personal friend, and learn what is soon to come upon this world. You remember the shaking? And what will the shaking do? It will purge out the tares so that that which remains is the wheat. Are you following? Isaiah 2 talked about this time, but Isaiah 4 shows what's going to purge the church. Go to Isaiah chapter 4. Go to Isaiah 4. Notice what the Bible says. In Isaiah, the fourth chapter, and in the second verse, Isaiah 4 and verse 2. Would you read that for us, uh, Brother Tony? Isaiah 4 verse 2. What does the Bible say? Yes. What's this church going to look like? They're going to be what? Beautiful and glorious. Continue. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Escape from what? What just took place? Look at verse 3. Verse 3. Sister Melissa. Verse 3. What does it say in verse 3? Now, I'm going to stop you for a moment. If someone is left in Zion, what does that tell us happened in Zion? Something just took place in Zion, and, and, and somebody is left. Let's see what's happening. Continue. Let's continue. Where? Among the what? Living in Jerusalem. So there's going to happen something inside of God's people. That's going to cause some to be shaken out, others to left and remain and become a remnant. Now watch what happens. Verse 3. Continue. Uh, next verse, I'm sorry, verse uh, 4. Wait a minute now. He shall have what? Washed. So what is he doing to his church? Talking to me. Washing them. So first he wakes up his church. Then he does what? Cleans up his church. So she's washed. Now let's see how. Continue. How? By the spirit of judgment. What else? So God is going to allow a judgment to come upon his church that is going to separate the wheat from the tares. It's going to start judging the people of God and those that remain through that judging time are going to be called beautiful. Their names are going to be written among the living. Their names are going to be written. Those are who God is going to use to finish his work. Now, my brothers and sisters, in order to go through that, what must be out of us? What must come out of us? That which is filth. And what does filth represent? Sin. He's going to purge away the filth. So that means that before that takes place, there has to be a cleansing of the sanctuary, a cleansing of the congregation, a cleansing among the people of God. Do we need to clean up, yes or no? Now, my brothers and my sisters, this shows us what's going to take place. Now, what's going to give us the power? Then the glad tidings of a what? Risen Savior were carried to that most bounds in the heavenly world. The church beheld converts doing what? Flocking to her from all directions. Believers were reconverted. This is what happened when Pentecost took place. Remember when we studied Pentecost? Outpouring of the early rain. Sinners united with Christians seeking the pearl of great price. One interest prevailed. One object swallowed up all others. All hearts beat how? This is Christ's Object Lessons 120. The only ambition of the believers was, number one, to reveal the likeness of Christ's character. That was being brought back to perfection. It says, and to labor for what? The enlargement, the enlargement of his kingdom. And that was the carrying of this gospel to the entire world. They were seeking to do that. Who did that? The Spirit of Christ animated how much? The whole. That was Pentecost. These scenes are to be repeated and with what? Greater power, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was the former rain, but the latter rain will be what? More abundant. So what do we need? We need power. Go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1. In the book of Acts chapter 1, the Bible tells us what this power is. What is this power that's going to allow us to live above sin? What is this power that's going to bring us back to perfection? What is this power that's going to give us the ability to witness and to bring the message to every nation on this globe without anything but, the, uh, but, but, but this thing? I'm not going to tell you what it is. What is it that's going to give us this power? Talk to me, somebody. The Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1. Let's see it from the Bible. Acts 1. Notice what it says. Acts 1. 
uh, Amaya, if you read this for us, please. Acts chapter 1, beginning in verse 8. Notice what the Bible says. In fact, back up to verse 3. Acts 1, verse 3. What does the Bible say in verse 3? So after he died, he resurrected and showed himself. Continue. How long? Now, was something going to happen in a little while? What was going to happen in a little while? Pentecost. Next chapter. 2-1. Now, Pentecost means 50. So 40 days passed. How many days before Pentecost? 10. And Jesus understood the plan of redemption. He knew that the Pentecost was coming on time. He knew that that fourth feast was going to happen on time. Now, it goes on to say, continue my, uh, my Now look what he said in verse 4. Now notice his command. His command was go out and reach all of Jerusalem right now. No, 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 no. Different instruction. Let's continue. What was his command? His command was what? You better not go nowhere yet. <laughs> you better get something before you go. You know, if you got a vehicle, I don't care how powerful it is. You could have got a six by six. Yeah, was it four by four? You could have you 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 got everything, having diesel, gasoline, everything. But if you had no gas in that thing, no fuel, what's, where's the truck going to go? No. <laughs> Do you know what the church would look like trying to reach the world with no Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Nowhere. Nowhere. But guess what? If we get that Holy Spirit, we don't need anything else. This is our greatest need. Look at what it says. Acts 1 goes on to say in verse 4, he said, don't just depart from Jerusalem. He said what? Continue. But wait what? I wonder what this promise is. Continue. And what was that promise? Verse 5. With what? Talking about rain. Continue. How many to be exact? Ten days. It happened on time. Pentecost, early rain. And it's going to be repeated under the latter rain, loud cry. All nations will be, heard by, uh, will be reached by this. And so Jesus said, don't go nowhere yet. But guess what happened? Verse 8. Go down to verse 8. Uh, Sister Davis. Acts 1 verse 8. Power. That's what we need. To do what? And ye shall be what? Where? Where else? Where else? And where else? Is that the world? Yes or no? All nations. So question, what did they need first before they could have power to overcome their defects? The Holy Ghost. What did they need so they could have power to reach the entire world? The Holy Ghost. Now, God gave us a symbol of the Holy Ghost. What was that symbol called? Rain. Water in the verse. Yes, water. And when water drops out of the sky, what is it? Rain. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is what we need. Now, watch it now. In describing to his disciples the office work of the what? Holy Spirit, Jesus sought to inspire them with the joy and hope that inspired his own heart. Jesus, look at his church, less than a hundred people, but he knew they were going to reach the world. Amen. He said, they're going to finish the work. They're going to do it. Now, what gave Jesus such joy? What inspired him? He rejoiced because of the abundant what? Help he had provided for his church. Amen. The Holy Spirit was the what? Highest of all gifts. Give me another name for highest of all gifts. It was the best gift, the greatest gift. It was their greatest need, our greatest need. The Holy Spirit was the highest of all gifts that he could solicit from his father for the exaltation of his people. What do you get from that? Remember Isaiah 2? He's going to exalt his church upon the mountain. What was going to exalt his church upon the mountain so all nations could be reached? The Holy Spirit. It says the Spirit was to be given as a what? Regenerating agent. What does regenerate mean? What does that mean? To revive. It says, and without this, the sacrifice of Christ would have been of what? No. Now somebody tell me what that means. The cross would have meant what? Nothing. Nothing without the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It says the power of evil had been strengthening for centuries. And the submission of men to this satanic captivity was amazing. It says sin could be resisted and what else? What's that next word? Only. What does only mean? Nothing else. Only through the mighty agency of the Father. Only through the mighty agency of the Son. Only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead. And there are those today that will tell you there's no heavenly trio. They'll tell you there's no Holy Spirit. You know that man's been deceived. But this tells us that the third person of the Godhead, 
The Holy Spirit would come with what? No modified energy, but in the fullness of what? Does the Bible say that he's going to bring power? Yes or no? Yeah. Acts 1 verse 16. Not by might, Sister Kia, nor by, uh, by power, but by what? My spirit. It says, it is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. It is the spirit that makes the heart pure. Through the spirit, the believer becomes a what, everybody? And you better remember that. That's the secret right there. The Holy Spirit makes us a what? Partaker of what? Now, I want to ask you a question. If we partake of the divine nature, what does that do? Think about that now. What, what are you right now? What are you and I? What are you and I? Are, are we divine right now? No. What are we? We are human. But what do we need? Who do we need to help us? Humanity or divinity? divinity. So we need divinity to help us. Uh, divinity. We need divinity to help us. But human is not divine. Divine is not human. So in order for divinity to help us, there must be something that connects what? Something that what? Connects what? Humanity and divinity. Now, what do you need? Watch now. This says, it is the spirit, that, uh, it is through the spirit that the believer becomes a what? Partaker of what? So if you receive the Holy Spirit, he will allow you to do what? Partake of the divine nature. And now what has happened inside of you? Your humanity is combined with what? Through the agency of the Holy Spirit. Now watch it now. Watch it. The Savior took upon himself the infirmities of what? Humanity. humanity. And lived a sinless life that men might have what? No fear that because of the weakness of human nature, they could not overcome. Christ came to make us what? Partakers of the divine nature. And look at this now. Look at this now. His life declares that what? Humanity. Combined with divinity does not commit sin. So then what do we need to bring us back to a sinless state to be connected? Our humanity has to partake of what? Divinity. How do we do it? The through the Holy Spirit. Do you, see, do you see this now? Watch it now. It is through the Spirit that the believer becomes a what? partaker of the divine nature. Christ has given his spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. How can humanity combine with divinity through the agency of the Holy Spirit? Can we finish the work without the Holy Spirit? No. So then what should our study be? How to receive the spirit. Look, the very image of God is to be reproduced in humanity. The honor of God, the honor of Christ is involved in the perfection of the character of Desire of Ages 671, 672. When his spirit, there's truth has come, he will approve the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. The preaching of the word will be of no avail without the continual presence and aid of the Holy This is the only effectual teacher of divine truth. Only when the truth is accompanied to the heart by the spirit will it quicken the conscience or transform the life. One might be able to present the letter of the word of God. He might be familiar with all his commands and promises, but unless, let's read this together. The Holy Spirit sets home the truth. No souls will fall on the rock and be broken. Nothing will bring us back to perfection to a sinless state but the Holy Spirit. Nothing will enable us to be able to teach and preach to all nations but the Holy Spirit. So then the key should be, brothers and sisters, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Now, in this last half, we're going to be looking at the science of receiving the what? The rain. The science of receiving the rain. Now go in your Bibles to Isaiah 59. Heavenly Father, as we come to the heart of the study, before we get ready to close, help us to understand the significance of how to receive the rain. I see that we see why it's important to receive it, but show us how, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we look at some of the details, I want us to begin to see the science of what is really involved in receiving the rain. Go in your Bible to Isaiah 59. What I want to tell you first is that there's a direct relationship between what? Sin and the rain. There's a direct relationship between sin and the rain. Now at first glance, somebody said, what do you mean? There's a direct relationship between sin and the rain. What do you think the relationship is? Talk to me, sister. Talk to me, sister Melissa. Sin prevents rain from coming into our hearts. Uh, the removal of sin allows, guess what? Rain to come into our hearts. We want to see that clearly from Scripture. 
Now, does anybody remember who is the Holy Spirit? Uh, when I say who is the Holy Spirit, I mean, what is his office? What is his work? Is he coming to speak of himself? No. What is the office of the Holy Spirit? John 14, if you read verses 16 through 18, write that down in your notes. John 14, 16 through 18, it says, Jesus says before you die, I'm going to send you after I leave another comforter. He's going to come and comfort you. He said, who's going to come in? John 14, 16 through 18. He says, who's going to comfort you is the Holy Ghost. And he said, he's going to come. And when he comforts you, he's going to teach you all things and bring to remembrance whatever I said unto you. He said, I'm going to, he's going to come in my name. In what? My name. Now, if somebody comes in your name, what does that make them? A representative. A representative. That's John 14, 16 through 18. So the Holy Spirit is the representative of Christ. So now, brothers and sisters, if Jesus is going to come to us, he can only come to us through the agency of the Holy Spirit. He took on a body, as we said last week, uh, the week before. Now, my brothers and sisters, let's look at this in Isaiah 59. You understand better as we go a little further. Go to Isaiah 59. Let's see the science of receiving the rain. Isaiah 59. And we want to begin in verse 1. Isaiah 59 in verse 1. Isaiah 59 and verse 1. What does the Bible say in verse 1? It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not what? Shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot what? Hear. Sister Chanel, would you read verse 2 please? Stop now. You're what? Talk to me somebody. Now give me another name for iniquities. So it's telling us something about iniquity and sin. It says your iniquities have what? Talk to me. Uh-huh. Now, I want to tell you something. When you and I were created, what we're looking at right now has something to do with our creation. Now, do you, anybody know what that is right there? It's a picture, an artist's rendition's picture of what? The Ark of the Covenant. You have the priest before the Ark. Now, what's in the middle of this Ark? You see this? What is this? Light. This glory. You know what it's called? The Bible calls it glory. The, if you go and study the Hebrew and the Jewish uh, culture, you, they, gave, they had a name for that glory. It was called the Shekinah glory. Now, this Shekinah glory represented something. You know what it represented? The presence of the deity, the presence of God. It was God's personal presence. This was in the sanctuary because this was supposed to be God's dwelling place. And it was when it was first created. The Bible says, let them make me a sanctuary that I may what? Dwell among them. Exodus 25 verse 8. Now, in Desire of Ages 161, I want you to read this with me. It says, that temple, what's it talking about? The sanctuary. Erected for the abode of the... Now, how do we know the sanctuary was erected for the abode of the divine presence? What does Exodus 25, 8 say? Let them make me a sanctuary that I may... Now, why would God need a sanctuary to dwell among them? Do you know that that was not God's original plan? God's original plan was not to dwell in the sanctuary? Do you know what God's original plan was? God's original plan was to dwell in us. The Bible says, what? Know ye not that your body... Is the temple of the Holy Ghost? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Now it says that that temple erected for the abode of the divine presence was designed to be an what? Object lesson for Israel and for the world. From eternal ages. It was God's purpose. Somebody turn it in the past. It was God's purpose that how many? Every. Does that include the angels? Yes or no? Yes. Humanity? Yes or no? That every created being from the bright and holy seraph, like Lucifer, to what? Man should be a what? Temple for the indwelling of the creator. But watch now. Because of sin, humanity ceased to be a temple. What happened to cause man no longer to be a temple for God? Sin. Does the Bible say in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, yes or no? So my brothers and sisters, what made the sanctuary necessary was that God can no longer dwell in us. So he said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them until he could teach us the plan of redemption that will bring us back to a place where he could live. Guess what? In us. Christ in us is the hope of glory. It's the hope of sinless perfection. Christ in us is the hope of sinless perfection. Christ in us is the hope of finishing the work. And so the devil is trying to keep Christ from coming to us. But Christ has a body in heaven. The only way Christ can come to us is through his representative, which is the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Yes. All right. 
So humanity ceased to be a temple of God, darkened and defiled by evil, the heart of man no longer revealed the glory of the divine one. So when God made man, God formed man on a desolate ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a what? And watch, watch man now, watch man. Boom! That Shekinah glory came inside of him. Did y'all see that glory come in there? Let me back that up, Maya. I know you, look, look at that Shekinah glory, look at that thing now. Boom! Now guess where it came, guess where it came? Why? Because the priest must write his covenant. The new covenant, he's going to write his law where? In the mind and the heart. So God was dwelling in the mind and heart of the believer. That's how it was in creation. But sin drove God out of man. And remember, there was a light that used to be around man. But when he sinned, the light went out, showing that the glory of the Lord had departed Ichabod. Ichabod. Now, my brothers and sisters, that's what sin did. It caused the glory of the Lord to depart. But the plan of redemption is to bring us back to a place where God can once again do what? Live inside of us. Amen. That's what we need in order to finish this work. Are you following this thing? Yeah. So my brothers and sisters, we got to make this happen again under following God's plan. That's the purpose of the Day of Atonement. But the only way is to learn how to receive the rain. Now look at the plan. There's a relationship between sin and the driving out of the Holy Spirit. And the only way to get him back is to have sin what? taken away. Now look at Acts chapter 2. Now is there a name? Go to Acts chapter 2 in your Bibles. I want to show you very quickly how to receive the rain. Do you want to know how to get this rain? Yes or no? We're going to see how to get the rain. Early rain over here. We're going to see, Maya, how to get this rain. <laughs> Early rain, we have been talking about this rain. Maya said, every time we get to I see how to get the rain, and almost like we, we can't get to it yet. <laughs> Early rain. <laughs> and latter what? Rain. We need to know how to get it. God has a simple plan. This, everything depends on this happening. Now, my brothers and my sisters, I want to make it very simple. In order to receive the early rain, there must be something called the remission of sins. Sin is always the key of not being able to receive rain. And the removal of the sin is always the key. The taking away of sin, always the key of how to get rain. I don't care what the rain is. In order to get rain, it always has something to do with the taking away of what? The taking away of sin. What drove God out? Sin. What will bring him back in? The removal of sin. What is the removal of sin called? The remission of sin. When sin is remitted, then the Holy Spirit in the early rain can come to us. Now, let me show you from the Bible that the Bible teaches this. Now, look at the Bible, what the Bible says in Acts chapter 2. Acts, the second chapter. In Acts, the second chapter, here's the day of Pentecost. The upper room had already received the rain. Ten days later, after Jesus told us, and now Peter is going to explain why they had received the rain and show those who were listening how they too could receive the rain. Look at Acts chapter 2. And notice what the Bible says in Acts chapter 2. And we want to begin reading. We can't read this whole sermon. Man, I wish we could. But, 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 but look at what it said. I was reading it myself. I said, Lord, this is good. This is good. Look at Acts 2. He's preaching with power. He talks about the plan of redemption. He goes through. You read uh, from verses uh, 14. Peter picks up. Let's pick up in verse 14. Sister Debbie, would you pick up in verse 14, please? Acts 2, verse 14. Now, he said, listen up now. Look at verse 15. For these are not drunken. Now, watch now. He said, these are not drunken. Now, why did he say these are not drunken? What made him say that? Is he just talking about drunkenness? What, what happened? The there were some, but there were some other people around. The religious leaders of the Jews that said these men are what? Drunk. What made them think they were drunk? Because they were speaking in other languages. Mm. And as they started speaking languages, other people heard the language. They, they weren't speaking gibberish. They were speaking these other languages. The people heard them, but they didn't know it. And they didn't know what was happening. They couldn't hear what was going on. But the other men said, they're speaking to us the wonderful work of God. They're talking about the plan of redemption. Now watch what happens. Uh, 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 Brother Tim, would you read Acts 2 verse 1? Back up to verse 1 for a moment. What does verse 1 say? Now when it says that it fully come, what did it mean? That 50 days were now here. They had fulfilled the prophecy. Continue. All right, Sister Cheryl, if you'll pick up for us in verse 15.
But the third hour of the day, verse 16. He begins to study with them what we study. Joel talking about the latter rain, the pouring out of the spirit, all of that. But then he says something. Jump down now to verse 38, 37, 37. Would you pick up there for his brother Jimmy? Acts 2, verse 37. He's now told them that Jesus has died on the cross, who you had dis disbelieved. Your prophets and your, your, rather your leaders had hung and slew. Man, now they're convicted. Look at back verse 36. Acts 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know the surety that God has made that same Jesus. Talk to me, Brother Jimmy. You're preaching with power now. Talk to me. Both Lord and Christ. Whom you have what? Crucified. Both Lord and Christ. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. What does prick mean? What does it mean they were pricked? Why were their conscience convicted or their hearts convicted? What, what happened? They recognize we committed what? Sin. We did what? Wrong. Now they're convicted to their hearts. And what does the Bible say? Continue on, my brother. What were they asking? They wanted to know what? What do we do now? Look at what he says in the next verse. What does the Bible say in verse 38? Why? Continue. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. Now, it's always about sin. It says you're going to receive the remission of what? Sins. Now, what happens once they receive the remission of sin? Continue, my brother. What happens? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this same gift uh, on Pentecost that was poured out in the early rain, he said, if you uh, are led to remission of what? sin you shall receive the Holy Ghost or the early rain so then what is the key to receive the early rain talk to me the remission of sins all right now I'm gonna ask you another question we'll come back to that what about the latter rain now let me show you something for a moment if you go through the Bible you're going to see that in order to receive the rain you will have to get to that point look at Acts 11 for a moment go to Acts 11 We'll come back to Acts 3, but look at Acts the 11th chapter. Look at Acts chapter 11, and I want you to watch this now. Acts, excuse me, chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, it's rehearsed in 11, but we'll look at it from chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, something happens. You know the story? We'll just touch the high points. You remember there was a man by the name of Cornelius. Anybody remember Cornelius in the Bible? Yeah. Jew or Gentile? Gentile? Gentile. He was a centurion. He was of the Italian band. You can read this in Acts the 10th chapter. All of a sudden, he's praying. He believes in God. He believes in the message that God has given to his ancient people. And he's praying and fasting, wanting to know the plan of redemption. God doesn't tell him directly. God says, I'm going to send you to my church. My church is the agency in which to do this work. And so he says, send someone for Peter, and Peter will explain to you the words of the plan of redemption. And after he said that, he's having this, the, the angel that stood before him. He said, I'm going to choose three men. He took three men. He took Two, he took two of his servants, his most trusted servants, and one soldier. Look at Acts 10. Look what the Bible says in verse 3. Uh, Acts 10, and we're going to pick up in Acts 10, and we'll pick up in verse, uh, verse 7. Acts 10, verse 7. What does the Bible say in Acts 10 and verse 7? Uh, would you read that for us? Sister Carleen. And when the angel which spake in Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. How many men was that? Talk to me. Three. Very important. How many men? Three. Three. All of a sudden now, at the same time, uh, it, it, later on, as he gave him this vision, God now, the day later, comes to Peter because God sent him to Peter but didn't tell Peter they're coming yet. Why did God not tell Peter they were coming yet? You know Peter wasn't ready yet? And so now God has to prepare Peter. So God gives Peter a vision. Now in Acts chapter uh, 10, same chapter going on, we'll see now Peter has a vision. Look at verse 9. Uh, Acts 10 verse 9. Picking up there, Sister Colleen. It's noon, 12 o'clock, six hours. Peter now is praying. But guess what happened when Peter starts praying? Peter gets, guess what? His, his stomach starts growling. <laughs> and the Bible actually brings out, I didn't say it was growling, but the Bible brings out he got really hungry. 
and, and, and he was getting, he was getting ready to eat. They were making dinner. He's, 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 almost, he's almost ready. <laughs> Lunch is almost ready. That's what he's saying. Now, you go and you read it, you actually see it says that. Now, as that happened, God takes him in vision. And does anybody remember the vision he shows Peter at that time? Yes. What does he see coming from heaven? He sees a sheet that it has, that's been let down on four sides. And inside the sheet is what? All four-footed beasts and crawling things is coming down. And when he sees it, how many times does it come down and go away? How many times? Three times. And he's, God says to Peter, rise up, kill, and eat. And Peter says, no, Lord. <laughs> You're, you're mistaken. I'm not going to eat that. <laughs> I don't eat anything that is un what? And he's right. He shouldn't eat anything unclean. But God was trying to teach him another lesson. This man, G Peter now, was calling something clean. And in Peter's mind, though, he called some other things that were unclean that were God actually had cleansed. What God was doing was showing Peter that what the Jews thought were unclean is not necessarily unclean. It was not based on God's biblical mandate. What God was trying to show him, not eat animals. You know, I've been in a, in answering the question and answers and then someone from other churches have come in. They say, oh, see, I don't know uh, 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 why you seven minutes teach this. This is showing us you can eat pig, you can eat pork, you can eat anything. God said anything. I said, well, have you ever read what the story is about? And we go back and read it and we show that that's not talking about physically eating. Peter himself explains in chapter 11, it was something helping him to see what he was to do to the men that he called unclean. He was to rise up and go with them. Kill his pride and prejudice and then by God's grace to consume all of that and work with the Gentiles. Watch what the Bible says. In Acts chapter 10, now you read the explanation in chapter 11. I don't have time to go through that this, this morning. But in Acts 10, look at what the Bible goes on to say. Three times this happened. Jump down to verse 19. In verse 19, it says, this was done how many times? Thrice. I'm mean, 16, excuse me, 16. Verse 16. This was done how many times? Thrice. We're in 16. Acts 10, verse 16. Are we there? Yeah. 16 says, this was done what? Thrice. And the vessel was received up again unto heaven. What was he saying? Verse 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or what? Unclean. Unclean. Verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God have cleansed, that call not thou what? Unclean. And this was done how many times? Unclean. Three times. How many men was coming to see him? Three. And what was Peter to do once he saw these three? Rise up. Now look at what the Bible says in verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, what? Talk to me, somebody. Three men in this powerful brother and sister. Yes. Then the Bible says, verse 20, what does he do now? What's the first words? Arise. He's doing just what the vision said. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing. Why? For I have what? Now, what were these men wanting to hear? Look at verse 28. Peter explains what happened. Look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. Would you read that for us? Uh, Mother Davis, Acts 10, verse 28. And he said unto them, He understood now. Oh, I understand. When did God show him? In that vision three times, these three men are not unclean. These three men, I have woke them up and washed them up. They are a part of my children. The only problem is they don't know the plan of redemption. This is what the loud cry is going to be like. God has people in other churches. They are God's children. They love God. God calls them mine, but somebody has to understand the plan that can share with them. Are you following me? Now watch what happens. Watch what happens now. Now the Bible says they get up. Now look at what he did. Look at what the centurion did. Uh, not centurion, but the, uh, 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 the centurion. Verse 24. What does it say in verse 24? Uh, picking up there in verse 24, uh, Amaya. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near He was working with his family members. He brought his friends together. And look at what he wants them to understand. He wants them to understand how they, by the Spirit of God, can be saved. That's what he wants them to understand. Now, let's go a little further and see what he says. Let's, go down, let's jump down. He tried to worship Peter. Peter said, no, don't worship me. Now, jump down to verse 33. Immediately, therefore, I said to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee. 
Did they want to hear? Yes or no? Oh, yeah. They were ripe. What if Peter didn't know the plan? What could he have done for them right then? Nothing. Now, but watch what Peter does. Verse 34. Then Peter did what? Let's read this all together. Then Peter did what? Opened his mouth. And he says, guys, no, he, God is not a racist. He's not a respecter of persons. Verse 35. But in how many nations? In every nation, he that fear of him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. Verse 36. The world which God sent into the children, word which God sent into the children of Israel, preaching peace by who? Jesus Christ. Verse 37. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John was preached. Verse 38. How God did what? Talk to me. He's going through the 70 week prophecy, the baptism, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the close of probation on the Jewish nation. He's going with everything we learn in 23 years of prophecy. It says, and with power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was what, everybody? Verse 39. And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung where? Verse 40. Him of God raised up when? What, talk to me, somebody. On the first fruits. He talked about the Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits. He's going to get ready to get to Pentecost. Now, look what it says in verse 41. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who he did eat and drink with him after he rose from the... Now, I want you to notice 42. And he commanded us to preach what? And to testify that it is he which ordained of God to be the judge of what? Quicken the dead. Now, watch now. Verse 43. I want to see if you get this. This is this is rich. Verse 43 to him. Give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive what? Now watch now. He had been preaching about the entire plan of redemption, but no Holy Spirit. He gets to the message of the remission of what? And what happens once he gets to remission of sins? Watch next verse. Watch what the Bible says. This is beautiful. Watch what it says. Next verse. It says what? While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. So what preceded them receiving this Holy Spirit, this falling of the rain? He had to explain to them the what? Remission of sins. And when they by faith entered into the remission of sins, the Holy Spirit fell on them. What happened on Pentecost? They received the what? Remission of sin and the Holy Spirit did what? Fell on them. So my brothers and my sisters, in order to receive the early rain, what has to happen to us in 2021? Remission of sin. But what about latter rain? We didn't, we didn't explain this yet. But what about latter rain? What about latter rain? Go to Acts 3. Go back to Acts 3. See, remission of sins is not enough for the latter rain. Remission of sins will prepare us for the early rain, but we need more than a remission of sins to get ready to receive the latter rain. In order to receive the rain of the early rain, I have to experience remission of sin. What is the experience necessary to receive the latter rain? Acts 3. Acts 3. Notice what the Bible says. Now, what should it have to do with if we're reading right? What should it have to do with? Where is there a direct relationship between sin and the rain? What has to happen to sin in order to receive the early rain? I have to have my sins what? Remitted. Remit it. Re going to re re removed or going to remission? Remit it. Now, what has to happen in order to receive the latter rain? Something must happen to my sins. What must happen to my sin to receive the latter rain? Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Let's read verse 19 together. Acts 3 and verse 19, all together. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be what? Blotted out when the times of... Give me another name for the refreshing. Give me another name. I'll point out the spirit in the latter rain shall come from the presence. What drove God's presence away? Sin. Sin. What's going to bring God's presence back? And what does this text say right here? The blotting out of sins. So what experience do I have to have in order to receive the latter rain? The blotting out of sins. Do you notice? Sin. Something has to happen to sin on both times. To receive the early rain, my sin doesn't have to be blotted out. To receive the early rain, my sin has to go into remission. I have to experience remission. But to receive the latter rain, my sin must not only be remitted. To receive the latter rain, my sin must be what? Do we see it from the Bible? Yes or no? Yes. But now, my brothers and sisters, we know this is of a truth. But you know what the question is? How? 
Go to Job chapter 9. Go to Job chapter 9. Go in your Bible to Job chapter 9. Job, you know, has talked about this. And Job said, look, I know that what you're talking about is true. We saw from the text, in order to be a part of this thing and finish the work, we need the rain. What rain? Early rain and the latter rain. The rain, latter rain seals us. But the inspiration is telling us no latter rain to seal us without the early rain. But we find out in order to get the early rain, we must experience remission of sin. In order to get the latter rain, we must experience blotting out of sin. But there's something that must happen inside of us that will allow either the remission of sin or that will allow the blotting out of sin. These are the two experiences that are necessary for the rain. Now, the early rain is poured out from the holy place when sin is remitted. The latter rain is poured out from the most holy place when sin is blotted out. Now, there's another name for the remission of sin. Anybody know another name for the remission of sin? To have it covered? There's a, what is the remission of sin? If, if you were to understand simply, what is the remission of sin? What is the remission of sin? Another name for the remission of sin. Praise the Lord. Talk to me. Another name for the remission of sin is the forgiveness, forgiveness of sin. All the remission of sin is, is the what? Forgiveness. forgiveness of sin. This is what he was preaching. He said, if you can have, how is our sin taken away? When it is what? Forgiven. Yes. You hear what this man said? He said, I want to understand that. Now go to, go to Luke chapter 24. I, 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 was, I, was going, I was going to let you assume that one for the sake of time, but we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back to that because this is precedes that. Now let's, let's go to Luke 24. Because he's asking about the remission of sin. We're getting ready to talk about how. But he said, I want to go back and make sure that that's there. Now, I was going to let you assume that. But because you asked, and that's good to know. Let's go back and look at that for a moment. Go to Luke chapter 24. Now, Peter says, this is what we're preaching. He said, I'm going everywhere to every nation. And he's preaching the remission of sins. Now, Peter and Luke, now God in Luke 24 is going to tell us what they were doing when they went to every nation. Look at Luke 24 and let's see what he says. Look at Luke chapter 24. Last chapter of Luke. I'm going to let Brother Tony read this for us. Luke chapter 24. Look what the Bible says, beginning at verse 45. This is, where his, this is where the disciples' minds were opened up to understand all of this. Look what it says in verse uh, uh, 44. Start in verse 44, please. So he started breaking down everything they were supposed to understand. Now jump down to verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin. That repentance and what? I didn't hear they emphasize that repentance and what? Remission. That's the key. We want to understand what that is. Continue. Remission of sins. Continue. Sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning where? Beginning at Jerusalem. So what did he say that God sent, Jesus sent him to do starting in Jerusalem? He was going to preach what? Preach what? And the remission of so now if we go back and watch what they did then and see what they preach, we will find out what the remission of sins actually is because that's what they were told to preach. Am I right? Amen. Let's see what they did. Go to Acts 10 now. Let's see what they did now. Go to Acts 10. Go to Acts 10 this time and watch what it says in Acts the 10th chapter. And notice what the Bible calls the remission of sins this time. It's going to give it a different name this time that's going to be taught to all the nations. Acts chapter 10. The Bible is going to show us something. Just like we left off talking about the remission of all these sins. Look what the Bible says. You're going to Acts the 10th chapter. Right when he began to speak that up, Acts chapter 10. Notice what it says in Acts 10, Acts 5, excuse me, Acts 5. Acts 5. Notice what he actually did in Acts 5, what he was preaching. Acts chapter 5, repentance and remission of sin. Acts 5, look at verse 31. Acts the 5th chapter. And the 31st verse, would you read that for us, uh, Brother Tony? Acts chapter 5 and verse 31. What does the Bible say there? Now, what were they supposed to be preaching? They were preaching the remission of 
But as you listen to their preaching, what were they actually saying? God's sins were, his sins would be what? Forgiven. forgiven. Now, all, if you look at the word remitted, if you look at the original word, the word remit is the word miss, remiss. Where we get our word missile. Where we get our word missionary. Miss just means sent. Re again or sent away again. It's just talking about when you send a missile out, you're sending something away. That's all it is. So to have sins remitted means that you are taking sin where? Away. So what is the forgiveness of sin? Talk to me, somebody. The taking of sin away. The remission of sin. What they preach is nothing more than the forgiveness of sin. So in order to receive the early rain, we have to have our sins remitted or we must experience the forgiveness of sin. Somebody says, well, I've already had the early rain because my sins have been forgiven. I wonder if they have. Is there a way of receiving and knowing that our sins have been forgiven? Yes or no? What if I haven't followed the steps to get forgiveness of sin? Is my sin forgiven? Yes or no? Look what the Bible says. Job chapter 9. Go to Job chapter 9. Go to Job chapter 9. And notice what the Bible says in Job 9. Now we're coming back to Job 9. After we see what the remission of sin is, the forgiveness of sin. In order to receive the early rain, what do I need to have? Talk to me, somebody. The remission of sin or the forgiveness of sin. Is that enough to get the latter rain? No. What do I need to get the latter rain? The blood. The blood. Good. Sound good. 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 Go to the book of Job chapter 9. Look what the Bible says in verse 1. Job chapter 9 verse 1. Would you pick up there for us, Sister Davis? Job 9 verse 1, please. Then Job answered now watch what Job said because this is how we should say. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. I know it is so of truth. The next two words. Stop right there. He said, I know it is such of a truth, but what? Now, brothers and sisters, we've gone through the Bible and it's clear we need the rain. Am I right? Yeah. It's clear that the only early rain can only be received by having sin removed, by the remission of sin, by the taking away of sin, by the forgiveness of sin. But how? It's only possible to get our sins blotted out if our sins, uh, it was only possible to get the latter rain if our sins are blotted out. But the question is not, is that so? We know that's so. The question is what? How? how? Is that a good question? You want a few more minutes? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. i give you a few more minutes. You sure? Yes. <laughs> Let me give you a few more. This is good, brother. Stephen. Okay. Yes. Now look now. Watch. How? How? How are sins forgiven? What is the very first step? Now we're going to the science of the detail now. The science of receiving the rain in its detail. How early rain? Go in your Bible first. Let's go to first to the book of Job. What book? I'm not Job. John. Go to the book of John 16. Who do you think it is? That prepares us to receive the rain. Who do you think it is that prepares us to receive the rain? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? The Holy Spirit prepares us to receive himself. Amen. It's just like the soil. Do you know before you can plant the seed in, the water has to soften the soil before it can water the seed in the soil. So the Holy Spirit, that rain, softens the heart so they can actually come into the heart and do first on the inside. The problem is most of us have experienced the early rain from the outside, but not from the inside. Now we're going to find out that the early rain can be received in degrees. How much did I say? Degrees. You know the Bible says that Jesus received not the Holy Spirit without measure. In other words there was no measure to the Holy Spirit that, that Jesus received. It was infinite. He received it. Overflowing. But do you know that we can receive a small supply of the Holy Spirit and can receive more and more of that rain. The latter rain comes in fullness. But we can receive this a little my little and you and I are preventing this. But guess what? What if you rain on a plant and then you stop watering the plant and then the sun comes? What happens to that water? Oh, you know, it's possible to have received the Holy Spirit yesterday. Mm -hmm. And by not continuing the experience that you lose everything that the Holy Spirit gave to you. Yes. Because we were once converted and have Backslid. backslidden. Now, my brothers and sisters, we have to identify if this has happened to us. So what we want to do now, we'll come back to this page. I want you to be able to see this very simply as we, as we close in the early rain. Receiving him. How? We know there must be the forgiveness of sin. Give me another name for the forgiveness of sin. Remission of sin. Go in your Bible to John 16. This is the first thing he does when the Holy Spirit comes to come in to give us the rain. In John 16, go to John the 16th chapter. And we want to pick up in verse 7. John 16, verse 7. John 16, verse 7. We'll read this together. John 16 and verse 7. What does the Bible say? John 16, verse 7. What does the Bible say? 
It says, nevertheless, what? I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go. Here, who's talking? Who's talking? Jesus. So he's saying, I got to leave. What is he, where is he going? Heaven. Back to heaven. He says, expedient that I go. Why? Continue. For if I go, what? Not away. For if I go not away, the comforter. Who's the comforter? The According to John 14, 20, 26, the comforter is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, what's going to happen? So Jesus, when he went back to heaven, he sent them to us as our high priest. That was the first gift he gave us as a high priest. Now watch what he does. What's the first thing the Holy Spirit is going to do when he comes to try to come in? Verse, it goes on to say, uh, I'll send it to you, verse 8. And when he is come, he will do what? Whoa, 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 whoa. When the Holy Spirit comes, he doesn't come to us first as a comforter. You know what he comes to us first as? A reprover. So now in order to receive the early rain, what has to come to us first? Reproof. That man that's dead, resurrected, you killed him. You slew him. It was your sin. My sin, beloved. In other words, those straight preachers begin to give reproof to show them that something had happened called what? Talk to me. Sin. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes to come in, he cannot just come in. He must first point out what? Talk to me. Sin. Sin. He comes to reprove. Now, watch this now. It says, through the marriage of Christ, the man can be restored to harmony with his maker. His heart must be renewed by what? Divine grace. He must have a new life from above. This change is the new birth with, without, without which, says Jesus, he cannot see the kingdom of what? That was to Nicodemus. Remember John 3? Now let's read this together. The first step in reconciliation to God is the what? Conviction of sin. What does reconciliation mean? We're being brought back. Now, remember the work of the priest? Not only bought, but we're to be what? Brought back. So the first step of being brought back to perfection, getting a relationship with Christ, where I know him as a close, intimate, personal friend. What's the very first step? Is what? The first step in reconciliation to God is what? What does that mean? Conviction of sin. The heart is pricked, just like on the day of Pentecost. Before they receive it. The conviction comes in. In other words, I'm convicted about what? I'm convicted that I don't, I don't look nice today. Is it, what am I convicted about? I'm convicted about what? Sin. So my brothers and sisters, the very first thing that has to come to us is reproof. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Now, that starts a series of steps in which we have a part in. What do we do once the Holy Spirit convicts us? Because that will determine whether we receive the rain or whether we reject the rain and become as dry as the hills of Gaboa. What is the first step? Go in your Bible to Psalms 32. Let's see. Uh, Psalms 32. Jer Jeremiah 3. Excuse me. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3. Go to Jeremiah 3. And let's see what the first step is. Go to Jeremiah 3. Go to Jeremiah the third step. Th first step in Jeremiah 3. Go to Jeremiah 3. I'm getting ahead of myself. Jeremiah 3. And as we conclude, we want to see how to get this rain. Number one. The Holy Spirit does not come and just jump inside of us. The first thing he does is says, I can't come in because of this sin. He has to convince us and convict us. You know what most people do? When most people are convicted by sin, you know what they holler? They holler, he is condemning me. You know the average person doesn't know the difference between conviction and condemnation. They don't know the difference between what? Conviction and condemnation. Do you know that if I sin... God does not condemn me to be lost. You know what he says? If you're willing to give up those sin, guess what? I'll take it. I'll save you. Conviction is not condemnation. Somebody can be told that they're living wrong. Oh, he condemned me. My preacher condemned me. Told me I was living wrong. Telling you you're living wrong is not condemning you. It should bring not condemnation, but what? Conviction. conviction. The Bible should show us conviction. Now, what does conviction mean? What is conviction? What, what do I say when I'm convicted? Conviction, well, let me show you the first step. Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 3. Look what the Bible says in verse 12. Jeremiah 3, verse 12. In verse 12, let's read this together. Jeremiah 3, in verse 12, what does the Bible say? It says, go and proclaim what? These words toward the north and say, return. In other words, come back, thou backsliding Israel. 
saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to what? God doesn't want us to be lost. He wants us to be saved. This is the plan of redemption. It says, for I am what? Merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger. How long? So then what is our part? Verse 13. What does the Bible say? Only what, everybody? Acknowledge thine iniquity. Give me another name. Another name. Only acknowledge thy iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And you have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. The first thing, if we're going to receive the rain, when the Holy Spirit reproves us of wrong, what's the first step if I want to receive the rain? Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Very first step. Now, what if the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, through the spirit of prophecy, through the preacher, through my own conscience, shows me what you're looking at on television is wrong. What you're eating is wrong. What you're wearing is wrong. The day you're going to worship on is wrong. The man you killed, that was wrong. The thoughts, wrong. The relationship you're in, wrong. The way I am as a child, wrong. Is that condemnation? You know what that is? The convicting influence of the Holy Spirit. That's the first step of the priest bringing us back to Jesus. Restoring a friendship. Making us have a close, intimate, personal relationship. He shows you we cannot have a relationship like that. That's wrong. But I'm here to make you right. Are you following? What is the first thing now in our part? So, oh, that's the, uh, he shouldn't have preached like that. He's meddling where he shouldn't have meddled. That is the way not to receive the rain. You know what I need to do in order to receive the rain? What's the first step? Acknowledge. Acknowledge. I'm wrong. Do you know when, if a man is a addicted, and he was going to an alcoholic class or any other addiction, you know what the first step of breaking that addiction? Acknowledging that he has an addiction. You know what, if you, you go to anonymous AA, alcoholic, you, they come in, the first thing they'll tell you, you come in, you say, my name is, and I am an alcoholic. As long as you say, oh, my friend, we just casually drink, <laughs> you know, it's not really, it's not bad. I just have 10 cups, but it's not really that big. You say 10 cups? And then you look at it, and then you go, you think that was bad enough, but you go to see the size of his cup, it's, it's like one of those big gulp cups, you know? You say, wait a minute, brother, that's not no 10 cups. <laughs> that's gallons. You are drunk. Now, my brother and sister, the Holy Spirit comes in, the first step to get away. What about a man who's hooked on pornography? Hooked on selfishness, hooked on uh, uh, intemperance, hooked on anger, hooked on doing the wrong things. What about the woman who is trapped in, in, in looking like the world and trying to get caught up in all these things? What about the family? The first step, you know what the first step is? Acknowledge. I acknowledge. I'm wrong. When this message found me, I'm going to tell you something. That messenger of God was sent to me. He's now resting in his grave. He sent that message sent to me, and I remember everything he taught. I was on the wrong side. And I said, This man is right, and I am wrong. I could have thought, No, well, this old man, why is he telling me this? How can he? Uh, is it because he's so tall, he can't see me? No, no, that's no, no, not going to work. But I listened to the Holy Spirit, and I said, I acknowledge. I'm living wrong. I'm thinking wrong. Everything I look at, what I'm listening to, what I'm eating, what I'm wearing, wrong. But Lord, I want to be right. And nothing I can do can make me right. I have to first, what? Acknowledge smoking, not good. Alcohol, not good. Not going to church, not good. It's wrong. But there's much more than that. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? And what we have to study as we start going to next week, we're going to start getting to what's much more than that. What applies to us in the remnant church to prepare for the seal so we can receive the latter rain. Now, my brothers and my sisters, this is the first step to acknowledge. Can we see that clearly? Yes or no? Yeah. When the conviction comes upon us, we have to acknowledge. And all that is to say, declaring in mind and heart, I am wrong. God in your word and the spirit of prophecy, you are right. That's the first step. Have you done that? When the Holy Spirit comes to tell you you're wrong, have you done that? And say, Lord, you're right. I'm wrong. What's the second step? What's the second step? Go to Psalms 32. Look what the Bible says. Uh, and, and, and Excuse me. Go to uh, Acts 2. Acts 2. Second step. Acts 2. Go to Acts 2. 
And look what Peter said. He tells us the second step. And the Bible is like a puzzle, so it doesn't just give us all the details immediately. It gives us into a step by step. And we got to put it together like a puzzle. Watch what it says in Acts 2. Look what the Bible says in Acts 2. In Acts, the second chapter, the Bible tells us the second step. In Acts 2, look what the Bible says, beginning in verse 38. 37, they're pricked in their heart. 38 tells us the next step. What shall we do? 38, let's read verse 38. And we're going to stop at the first part. Acts 2, verse 38. What does the Bible say in verse 38? It says, then Peter said unto them, what's the first words? Repent. Repent. Guess what the second step is? Repent. Repent. That's the second step. We're going to stop right there. Repent. Now, my brothers and sisters, first step, acknowledge I'm wrong. Second step, repent. What's the difference between acknowledging I'm wrong and repenting? What is the difference between acknowledging that I'm wrong and repenting? Repenting? It, it, it includes turning away. But even before that, look at this now. How shall a man be just with God? How shall the sinner be made righteous? It is only through Christ that we can be brought into harmony with God. This is steps to Christ 23, 23 with holiness. But how are we to come to Christ? Many are asking the same question as did the multitude on the day of what? When convicted of sin. First step. That the Holy Spirit does that. They cried out, what shall we do? The first words of Peter's answer was what? And another time shortly after he said, repent and be converted. Repentance includes, number one, what? Sorrow for sin and what? A turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see it's what? So somebody has to show us the sinfulness of sin. It says, until we turn away from it, sin in the heart, there will be what? No real change where? You know that if somebody never preaches to us the sinfulness of sin, we may even stop doing it but not see it's bad. Mm-hmm. You know that some people stop smoking not thinking smoking is bad? Yeah. They just stop smoking because they don't like it anymore. It was wasting their time, wasting their money. That's not repentance. That doesn't give you the rain. A man can stop smoking, can stop drinking, can stop fornicating. That itself does not give you the rain. There's a difference between repentance and stopping to do something that's, that's wrong. Repentance includes first a what? Sorrow. Sorrow. In other words, in order to repent of something, I must see, number one, what I'm doing is sin. You know that many people who stop smoking don't even see smoking as a sin or drinking as a sin. They don't see it as a sin. And so that's not repentance. Repentance says, I acknowledge it's transgressing God's command. It's wrong. It's sin. That's number one. Number two, it's sorry about it. You know, it's possible to have eaten something or smelled something or done something and you think back to it, man, I really enjoy when I used to do that. I don't do it anymore, but boy, I really did enjoy when I did that. That's not repentance. No rain. You can stop doing it forever and still no rain. Repentance makes me what? Sorry. Look what the Bible says in Psalms. Let me show you that from the Bible. Go to Psalms 31. Psalms 31. Notice what the Bible says in Psalms 31. You'll notice what the Bible says very carefully. The Bible walks this through and shows us exactly the steps that will lead to Christianity. The steps that will lead to the early reign. The steps that lead to conversion. Notice what the Bible says in Psalms 31. And when you get there, let me know by saying amen. amen. Notice what the Bible says in Psalms 31. And we'll pick up there. Psalms 31. And we want to look, look what the Bible says here and we'll pick up. In verse, let me fall upon myself, myself first. Hold on one moment. Psalms 32. Let me let me back up and make sure that's right. Psalms 32. Let me back up for what I want first. Ah, Psalms, Psalms 30. No, it's not. It's not 31. It's not the one I want. It's 32. No. Thirty. It's in the thirties. 
Ah, thank you, Lord. Psalms 38. See, the Holy Spirit is real. Psalms 38. Psalms 38, excuse me. Psalms 38. And look what it says in verse 17. Psalms 38, verse 17. That's what it says. Psalms 38, verse 17. Look what it says. In Psalms 38, verse 17, it says, For I am ready to halt, and my, what everybody? Sorrow is continually before me. Verse 18. For I will declare my iniquity. That's acknowledging. And what does it say? I will be what? Sorry for what? My sin. So two things. Number one, he declares the iniquity. I'm wrong. I acknowledge. Number two, I am now sorry for my what? Sin. It's all about sin. How do we relate to sin? Now, my brothers and sisters, if I'm not yet sorry for sin, have I repented yet? And if I have not repented yet, has my sin actually been remitted yet? No. So the step, number one, acknowledge. Number two, repent. Which means, number one, I am sorry for, not everybody else's sin, but I'm sorry for what? My sin. So what has to be pointed out to me? My sin. I want to go forward, but my time is gone. I can't, I can't, I can't stretch. I was trying, I tried to stretch as much as I could. I stretched as much as I could. I tried, Brother Bill, but we got into the beginning. Did we get something? Yes or no? Yes. We're here. Now, we'll come, we'll come back here, and we're going to talk about the early rain and the latter rain, how to get it, and we're going to mail this in because we're going to find out that once we begin to understand that, there is something called the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. And we're going to find out that all of these steps lead us See, after the chapter in, in Crossing the Shadow called the Day of Atonement, guess what the next chapter is? The duty of the congregation on the Day of Atonement. We're going to find out that God has a part and man has a what? But I want to take our time through this so we can understand. So I'm not going, I'm not going to uh, rush us through, but I want to make sure we begin to receive this. Now, question. What if you don't want your sin pointed out? What if I don't want my sin pointed out? No water, no rain, no Holy Spirit. What if I'm not sorry? Can you make yourself sorry for sin? I have to go to God and say, Lord, what I'm doing is wrong, but I'm not even sorry. I love it. I enjoy it. I was talking to God this week. I'm going to close right here. And let me put that down. I get tempted. Let me, let me cut that off. <laughs> that thing will tempt you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. When you understand how short time is, you understand why I'm tempted. Time is running out, but we're not yet ready. And the reason why we're not ready is because we are still addicted to sin. And that addiction has to break if we're going to go through. If we're going to be a part of this team, God used to finish the work, and we don't have much time left. We're in the last moments. I was talking to God last week, and I was saying to God, I said, Lord, I want complete victory over every sin. I want to become just like Jesus. You know, God starts saying, you got to pray more. That's one of the first things he told me. You got to pray more than you're praying. You got to pray a lot more than you're praying. And I start saying, dear God, I want to pray more. Lord, help me, Lord. And as you start talking, as I'm working, I'm praying. And you stop by at night and morning, pray. Start saying, Lord, I want to pray more. And, so, and you got to talk to God and tell him, Lord, show me what's in my life. Amen. Show me what's in my family's life. If you're a priest, it's not just enough for you. It's not just enough for you, for you, for you, for me. We got to look at our wives and our children. And we got to pray, God, give us wisdom to help our entire family so that we can see what's going on in our hearts, what's going on in our homes. Don't you want to be saved? Yes. And I started saying, Lord, show me. And God said, you got to start talking to me. Tell me everything that's going on. What's going through your thoughts? What do you like and not like? What do you hate and not hate? Do you still have something that you love more than me? He said, oh, no, I gave that up a long time ago. But question, do you hate it? You don't listen to it? Okay. You don't eat it? Okay. You don't wear it? Okay. You don't think about it? Okay. You don't relate that way? Okay. But do you hate sin? Who has the most of your time? When you are relaxing, what is your relaxation? Picking up your phone? Looking at YouTube? Watching a television show? What, what's relaxing to you? What's, a, what, what's nice to you? And when you kick your foot back, what's nice to you? And you know, the average person, the, the greatest thing they do, the majority of the time, is not, oh man, let me run in my Bible and let me pray God, get sin out of my life. They may not be going down and, uh, at the nightclub, they may not be smoking and drinking, may not be doing all that. But the greatest thing in their life is not Jesus. And before this thing is finished, God has to make us just like Jesus. We don't have much time. I'm saying, dear God, I don't look like you yet. Help me, Lord. 
Do you want him to help you? Do you want him to point out in your life? We can pray, Lord, make me willing to see my sin, to acknowledge my sin, to be sorry for my sin, and then follow those steps that will allow us to receive the early and the latter rain. If we do that, we can receive the seal of God. If we do that, we can be a part of the team that God uses to, get, uses to give the loud cry and finish the work. I want to be a part of the team. What do you say? That's your desire. Would you reverently kneel with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, if we're honest with ourselves and with you, we would have to admit that we don't yet look just like Jesus. Our time is not occupied the way Jesus' time was occupied. He spent entire nights in prayer for his family, in prayer for himself to be braced for duty. Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us, Lord, how to receive you so that we are literally sorry for our sins. So that we love you. Put enmity in our hearts that you promised that will make us hate sin. So that your head, Satan's head can be crushed. Lord, I plead with you that you would help every one of us individually to look at our own lives. And to receive the convicting influence of the Holy Spirit to point out everything that needs to be cleaned up. So that we can stand up with Jesus Christ. I pause this prayer. There's someone here that says, Lord, speak to me. I hear you speaking, Lord, and I want you this week to point out what needs to come out. I want you to help me this week to pray more. I want you to help me this week to share with others more of the need of getting ready for the coming of the Lord. If that's your desire this morning and you want the help of Jesus, just raise your hand wherever you are. Heavenly Father, you see our lifted hands. We cannot make ourselves sorry. We cannot turn ourselves from sin. We need you, dear God. Help that this week will be a week like never before. That we and our families will pray more. That we will study the chapter in the Day of Atonement, those who have not. And we will review seeking to understand what is the duty of the congregation on the Day of Atonement? How can I work with Jesus so that I can be a part of the team to finish this work? That I can know Jesus as a personal friend, close, intimate, and personal. Father, be of every lifted hand. Save us, we pray, and we thank you for what you did today, beginning to open to us the science of receiving the rain. Thank you, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were blessed by this study and would like to be a part of the BTI, that's Bible Training Institute, simply have your Bible pen and paper handy and check out our weekly studies by logging on to molministry.com. Hover over sermons, then from the drop down, click the word video. Also, tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the latest. Maranatha.